Hi everyone! So, uh, episode two, today... <sighs> Hi everyone! Welcome to episode two of Frank's TV. Today we're going to talk about coming out. We're going to talk about what it means, um, the different aspects of it that people don't often think about, and sort of the journey that it's taken me on and what I have now come to identify as. So stay tuned! Cause she's Sophie from the man Cause that girl does what no one can That's Frank She's the type of girl that you love to detest But when the one those feelings you choose to repress She's so beautiful I don't know how to address Let's call her Hi everyone! Welcome to episode two of Frank's TV. Um, again, I'm your host, Frank's. Welcome. So, last time I think I ran over time, so I, the video got cut off, and I felt like I also was, um, like my, my consciousness was just like streaming. So since then, I've set a timer. So if you hear the timer, that's what that is. And I've chosen to uh, maybe cut back a little bit on how much I let myself say, um, realizing that it makes more sense to just take my time and split things up into different parts and kind of just be a little bit more concise with what I'm trying to say. So last time I spoke about happiness, um, it was a big conversation. I talked about how it's a choice, what that choice means, all the ways I've gotten there, I talked about what Frank's TV is supposed to be about, we talked about a lot of stuff. I talked about a lot of stuff. And I think since then, I've learned a little bit about what I didn't say and what I could have said. And I think that everything I said stood true because it ties directly into the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which was the steps I took to happiness. Um, and in this case, it's about uh, coming out and what that means. So, coming out, you know, okay, we're queer. Obviously, we're here. Everyone has a coming out story that's a queer person. A lot of our coming out stories aren't great, but a lot of our coming out stories are super empowering because it was the moment that we choose to be ourselves. You know, it's the moment that you choose to be you publicly in the world and not hold anything back. Um, and so I guess I, I wanted to say, I think that something that people don't often talk about when it comes to like coming out is that it's not, well, this is something that I've run into just as an adult, um, the older I've gotten and the more I like do dove into the conversation about like gender and dismantled like masculine and feminine politics and really like opened myself up to the conversation about identity politics and like gender fluidity and transness and uh, like all these circulatory conversations that now surround a more expansive and inclusive queer community. Um, pff, bitch, I got lost in my last little bit. <clears throat> Basically, what I'm saying is that it's a process. It's a fucking process. It's not, it's not, I'm this, bam, that's it. I think that's a misconception that's placed on us because of the way that things are handled in the world. You know, capitalism and marketing tends to want to box you in to say like, you're orange, great. We can market you to all orange. You're purple, great. We're gonna market you to all purple. But what about someone who's green and orange and purple, but they're purple sometimes and they're green sometimes and they're orange sometimes, but sometimes they're even yellow. 
then what? And that's where capitalism says, oh, but you can't exist. Society and politics will tell you, oh, you're not real, you can't be here. Well, guess what? Uh, I am real, we are real, we're here. We're here every day, that's it. We're here, you know? And so when it comes to coming out, and I guess like what I'm getting to is that there's never gonna be a time where you can say um, concretely, this is who I am. Because I think that's just that, that to me, of course that exists for people and people need that to live. I'm not discounting that. But what I'm saying is that there's never an unraveling of ego and identity that can't continue to happen. So the deeper you dive into situations, the more you become who you are. And sometimes the more you discover about who you are, you change and you have to change because that's the only way for you to continue being who you are. Like there are some, let's say, okay, some drag queens, they may identify as a gay cis man at first who does drag, but then through drag, they come to realize their trans identity and they come to realize how much more they identify with the trans side of themselves and the female side of themselves versus the cis male side. And so they then begin to break into new territory when it comes to their own existences because they decide to transition or they decide to be that other person that was in there that maybe they didn't realize was there. And I would say that even in my own experience, uh, okay, in high school, I think I came out to some people as like bi, and then later I came out as gay, and then later I came out as asexual, and then I returned back to gay, and then I just kind of gave all of it up. And I was like, no, I'm just Frankie, Franks, Francis a lot of names, you know? But I was like, I'm just me. Um, I'm super queer, you know? Discovering more about my identity. And the more I realized was that even though there is a large part of me that might be cis male, there is an equally as large part of me that's feminine and female. And there's an equally a large part of me that's neither of the both. That's kind of somewhere in like a third quadrant. So I'm split into like thirds. And it's in expressing all of them together that I really get to be who I really am. That I'm, it's in not being boxed in to my own preconceived notions of the world's preconceived notions about gender and thinking like, oh, if I'm male, I have to be male. Oh, if I'm female, I have to be female. Oh, if I'm this, I have to be that. It's like, no, 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 no. Something that I've understood about my own coming out process was that I never have to come out for anyone's sake but my own. That coming out for me involves just being and allowing myself the space to discover and not being afraid to try on a dress and like a crop sweater and grow my hair out because I can also go and wear like the cargo pants and the fucking square shirt if I really want to. Um, but basically what I'm saying is that there's no, there's no rules when it comes to gender. There doesn't have to be. And there doesn't have to be any rules when it comes to coming out. Some people come out, some people don't. And ultimately, it's up to you. It's up to you and what you need. You know, I kind of came out to my, I came out to certain family members and certain people know more about my experience and about my identity because, um, I mean, because they kind of have to. I wanted them to know. I wanted us to be close. I wanted, them to experience a certain part of me that I felt like I was hiding from them. And there was enough security to do that safely. 
But I understand that in certain experiences, you do have to kind of protect yourself. And depending on where you are in the world, you can't always express yourself. Even me, living in New York City, there were so many times where I was followed to work and followed to the train and like yelled at by people in cars and put in situations that didn't feel safe because of the way that I was presenting my gender in that moment. And there were times where I would have to wear like a pants and a fucking baggy sweater because that was the only way that I was going to get from point A to point B safely. That's just what it is. We live in a world that's so misogynistic that it doesn't allow for there to be alternative expressions of gender. Even when it comes to being male or female, you it's like skewed through this other alternative lens that says like, if you're female, tits and ass. If you're male, dick and pecs. Okay, well, what about... Can, honestly, male with tits, okay. Female with dick, okay. Um, neither with both and neither, okay. And, you know, I, there's no rules. There's no rules. None of them. So that's what I'm here to say today is that when I chose to be happy, it involved me getting rid of all those things in my life and saying, no rules for Franks. There's no identity politics, no, uh, nothing, nothing from the world. Nothing, none of it, none of it's gonna be imposed on me. None of it matters, it's not my business, it's not my problem, I don't care what people think about me, it doesn't matter what you fucking think, this is who I am, this is how I wanna dress, this is how I wanna be, this is how I wanna live, and that's who I am, and that's it. So when it comes to coming out, it's just a process. It's just a huge process. I'm very blessed because my family has always just accepted me for who I am. Um, there's never been like a question of like, oh, Frankie, this, Frank, Frank's this and that, the, oh, we need you to be this way and that way. Nah, nah, nah. Obviously there's been opportunities to learn, but there's never been rejection or hatred towards me from anybody in my family or even my friends, any of that. But, um, so I've been allowed a lot of space to really expand my own gender identity and really get to know my own fluidity. Um, but not everyone gets that. And that's tough. It's not fair, you know? Um, but maybe I think the reason why I have it is so that I can come make space for other people to have it too. You know, if you need to talk to somebody, please, I am on Instagram or um, YouTube. You can send me an email if you really, really need to talk. Um, I'm here for people like that. You know, I, I've always been here for the person who doesn't feel like they know who they are and who needs space to be created for them. You know, that's really what this whole thing is, is that I'm now coming out as, um, ew, as like space, as like a lifestyle, kind of. Like I want people to be free. That's it. Whatever it is that you are, you don't have to be anything. That's the thing. Like you can be um, a cis straight man and you can still fucking vibe because that's who you are, you know? And if you're someone like me, who's super fluid and kind of waffles all across the board, space for you too, you know? And the union between all of these different spaces kind of exist within me. So I have now come to a place where in my coming out process, I've come out as just like a Venn diagram of all things. Go figure, you know? But it doesn't matter because ultimately what people think of my gender doesn't matter to me because I don't feel the need to go on Instagram and make a post about it because I don't have a need to alter the perception of me to people. Some people do. That's valid. But I don't. Equally as valid. You know? Um, 
But I think it's just because I'm also really private and kind of shy. Oh, you're on YouTube. How can you be shy? I can be shy. I can be private. What the fuck? I can be a person too. Um, so I don't feel the need to come out as anything. You know, I'm just coming out as pranks. Period. And anybody who wants to join can come to the pranks world and come out as themselves as well. You can all get a fun name if you really want one. Or you can just be you, regardless of what that means. I think that that's all I had to say about that, is that coming out is a lifelong process. There's going to be times where you're going to have to change in order for yourself to continue to exist, and that's very normal. And anybody who doesn't allow you the space to do that doesn't belong in your life. But more importantly, we, you, individuals, need to be the ones to build space for yourselves to do that. Okay, okay, girls, I'm keeping good time. Because last time I ran over, so the video cut out, and so this time, skirt, I'm keeping great time. Okay, so, back to this fun, wonderful segment we call What's In My Purse. Um, today we have this cute little mini tote. Um, I love her. My mom bleached her uh, because she was really super dirty. And I'm really grateful for her because she really, <laughs> she'll really see something of mine and see how dirty it is and clean it. And I just, some people might be frustrated by something like that, but I chose to just accept it. And now that she doesn't mean any harm, she really just wants me to look good. And also she's like, why are you so gross? And I'm like, you know what? It's because I went to college in Richmond, Virginia. That's why I'm so gross. So today in my, I know, right? I'm gonna get a lot of comments like, fuck you. So today um, in my little mini purse, today we have a mango, um, mango little mango, fresh mango. And I think what I wanted to talk about for the mango was, um, well, first of all, first of all, delicious. I love mangoes. You know, they're, they're native to Central and South America and they're obviously a tropical fruit. They're super delicious. Um, they're nice and fun parrot colors on the outside, but then you cut them open and they're yellow and fibrous and sweet and kind of tangy. Um, the reason why I brought the mango though is because I really like to talk about um, health a lot. Health is really important to me. What you put in is what you get out. So um, like water is the equivalent to like, water for your body is the equivalent to uh, oil for your car. So imagine what your body would function like without water. Imagine what your car functions like without oil. Food is the equivalent to gas. So if you put in a higher quality gas or a higher quality or build in like electric. With electric cars, this metaphor kind of goes out the window. But if you put in higher quality gas, in essence, you should be able to get better energy production. So the mango, what it's really good for, obviously it's like a natural source of sugar, um, which is Sugar is not good for you but at any me by any means. If you have um, Netflix or access to the web, you should watch Fed Up by Katie Couric. It's like a documentary thing and it fucking talks about sugar and it's crazy. It will make you never want to eat sugar ever again. Literally. Like it'll ruin sugar for you and it'll make you realize how... Just watch it. Just watch it. But the naturally occurring sugar in something like a mango, naturally occurring sugars are a little better for you because First of all, they're naturally occurring. There's nothing additional added to a fucking mango. Maybe GMOs, but everything has GMOs now. Um, so, I'm not gonna... You can't... It's been a point in living your life that way, okay? We live in the modern globalized society that we live in. There's no way to be like 100% healthy and 100% away from plastics and things like that. It is what it is. This is just the life that we live, okay? Simple. But something like a mango, great for your digestion, great for your gut and all the enzymes of something like a mango it's like it has something of like a pineapple so it's like that kind of like acidity 
like skin muscle tissue breaky downy type of vibe that type of vibe um really can like help your just digestion move forward it helps things just process down there and something that people don't talk about a lot is that that process is the thing that affects everything else like i said that's where all the gas gets processed into energy so if you're eating junk when it goes there it just mucks up your system but something like a mango delicious snack or you know i i like to put them in my smoothies every morning but something like a mango literally there's nothing like fuck i don't know how to say this you want this in your system okay you want stuff like this you want fresh fruit this type of stuff when your digestive system's on check your hair grows great your skin shines you have more energy you ward off illness and process illness infinitely better you know you can like you, you can just optimize the way that you function as a human being by eating things like mango and so if this is anything if this is like a product spot for mango mango industry mango you know eat a mango mango go have a mango we love mango in this house this is the house of mango um so we'll see you next time <laughs> thank you so much for uh watching and you know if you like the video subscribe if you don't i don't give a fuck do whatever you want i hope you subscribe though because i guess then that means i can eventually change my url from frankie martinez music to something more appropriate to what this is now um i don't even think i go by frankie anymore but i do kind of doesn't really matter now i'm ranting um if you have any questions please comment if you have anything you want to add please comment i know that the coming out thing can seem confusing and kind of controversial but I would love it if people would share their coming out experiences as well and kind of talk about this like wider um, conversation about uh, masculinity and femininity and the necessity to come out and like why we do or don't. You know, everyone's story is different. And if you feel like sharing, please leave it in the comments. Um, if you have anything else to say, you can reach out to me on Instagram. You can find me on here. Um, I'm gonna go eat this mango. Bye.